This is question 20. Here we're asked to work out the area of triangle ABC. Um, now, if I take a quick look at this triangle ABC, first thing that I note is that I can't use the formula that I would usually use to calculate the area of the triangle. I would usually use half base times height. But the problem is, is that I don't know what the height of my triangle is. So when I'm faced with this situation, a non-right angle triangle, what I'm going to need to use to work out the area of it is I'm going to have to use the formula half AB sine C. Okay, so in order for me to use this formula, what I need to have is I need to have a situation where I've got a triangle, and I'm just going to sketch one over here. I need to have a triangle where I've got an angle that I know, say, uh, let's call that, I don't know, 110. I've got an angle that I know, and then I've got two lengths which trap the angle that I know. So perhaps I knew that this here was, say, 12, and this one here was, say, 11. OK, and so when we are talking about half a B sine C, we're talking about two lengths A and B, which trap an angle C. Now, if I have a little look at my question here, what I can see is that I don't have this situation. I've got two lengths, but they're not trapping an angle that I know. And then, or I could think about it that I've got a length and an angle, but I don't have this other length AC. So if I knew this angle, or I knew that length, then I could use this formula half AB sine C. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm either going to have to work out what the length of AC is, or I'm going to have to work out what the angle ABC is. Now, looking at this, I can see that I think it's probably going to be easier for me to work out what this angle here is going to be. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the sine rule. Now, I'm going to pick the sine rule because I've got an angle and I have got the length opposite the angle. If I have that situation on a triangle, that means that I can use the sine rule to find out what other lengths or other angles are going to be. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that this is, so let's just write down the sine rule first of all. Sine rule, I'm going to say is A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. Where, um, when we talk about a, the lowercase a and the capital A, that is just the length um, and the angles which are opposite each other. So in this case, this here is an angle 48, this is the length 57, and so those two would be used in uh, the same part of the formula. So let's substitute in now. What I'm saying is that my length 57 divided by the sine of the angle which it's opposite, so it's over sine 48, is going to be equal to, and now if I, if I just take a look here, to work out this angle, um, I'm, I would need to have this length here if I wanted to work it out straight away. I'd need to have this length AC, but I don't have that. What I could do instead, though, is if I were to work out the angle opposite 36, because I do have that information, if I was to work out that angle, I would then have two angles in my triangle, which means that I could work out what the third one would be, and then I would have two lengths which trap an angle. So let's start working it out. 57 over sine 48 will be equal to 36 divided by sine x. Okay, so we'll call this angle here x. Then, what I'm going to do is start solving this. Now, to solve this, the easiest way to solve it is 
to start by flipping over both fractions uh, to give sine x on the top of the fraction. Um, this is just a preference that I have. I, if I have two fractions which are equal to each other, I always like to have the unknown value on the top of the fraction. So I'm going to have sine 48 over 57 is equal to sine x over 36. Then solving this, what I can then say is that um, sine x will be equal to 36 um, multiplied by uh, sine 48 divided by 57. And then to figure out what x is going to be, well, I'm just going to have to do the inverse of sine. So I'm going to say that that is sine to the minus 1 of this quantity here, 36 times sine 48 over 57. So if I now type this into my calculator, I'm saying that this is um, the inverse of sine, um, and then it's 36 multiplied by sine 48 divided by 57. So that is going to give me an answer of 27.9. So x is equal to 27.99, which means that if I know that this is 27.99, I can now work out what that angle there is going to be. And once I've figured out this angle here, I've then got a situation where I've got two lengths which trap an angle and I can use my half AB sine C. So what I'm going to say, and I'm going to keep this all in the calculator now, what I can say is that this is going to be, this angle here is going to be uh, 180 minus 48 minus the answer that I just figured out, 27.99. So that gives me 104.0075879. So that is that angle there. Now substituting into half AB sine C, what I'm now going to say is my next calculation is going to be half multiplied by A, so one of the lengths, which is 0.5 multiplied by 57, that length there, multiplied by the other length, which is trapping that angle. So multiplied by 36, and then multiplied by the sine of the angle that is being trapped, which was the answer that I just got, which was 104.007. So when I input all of that and press equals, that gives me an answer of 995 points. We'll, it says give it correct to three significant figures, so we will call that 995 metres, uh, metres squared because it's area. So final answer here, 995 metres squared.